asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want us to turn to the same scripture I used Sunday, and I want to continue on with that. St. John's Gospel, the 10th chapter, in the 10th verse. St. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. If you remember Sunday, I was talking about the abundant life that um, Pope John Paul II said the abundant life is sharing the life of God. Uh, that's sharing everything that God's in is the abundant life, whether it's through trials and difficulties and problems. Uh, that's the abundant life. You're sharing anything God's in. I don't care what it is, it's the abundant life. And some people think of the abundant life of where Adam was in the garden where everything is perfect and marvelous. I want you to know that Adam did not have the abundant life. He did not have the abundant life because to have had the abundant life, sharing the life of God, he would have had to have eaten of the tree of life and that he did not do. He was given a choice. It was a battle. To, to have eaten of the tree of life would have taken faith. There was absolutely nothing appealing about the tree of life other than the promise of life, that's all. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil appeared appealed to the senses. It was good for food, good for to pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. So it was a battle between faith in God and our senses. I trust you get this. And I want you to know that this is the great battle of life today. It's a battle between faith in God, or what God says, and our senses. Listen to what D. Kassad said, this great saint of the 17th century, this dear saint that lived in the days of Fenelon and Madame Guyon. <clears throat> D. Kassad said this, if we want to live a life of faith, now listen to this, if you want to live, and a lot of people will say, oh, I, I believe, I have faith. All right, listen to what he said, if you want to live a life of faith, we must fight without pause against the senses. If you want to live a life of faith, you must fight without pause against our senses. So the great battle of life is a, is a battle between faith and what God says and battle between our senses. Now, uh, don't misunderstand me. The senses are a gift from God for our enjoyment of life, and he gave them to us there for our enjoyment, the sight, the seeing, the smelling. All of our senses are a gift from God, but they were never meant to be our guide. They were always meant to be submissive to the will of God. God's guidance often goes against the senses. How many times have you ever heard Brother Helm say, well, now my head says yes, but God says no. Uh, do you have known that in trips to Israel? Look at the time God led to go to India. During the monsoon season, there wasn't a person, I don't think there'd been a person in the world that would have agreed with Brother Helm. Not even Jaya Parada, who was from India. She said, that's not the time to go. That's the monsoon season. That's when it's wet. But God said, and he believed his faith rather than his senses. His senses would have said, stay on. His senses said to everybody else, it's the wrong time to go. But we went to India. Those of you who went at that time went to India and found out it was just exactly the right time to go. It was the time when God led and worked everything out and the monsoon came afterwards. Why do so many people complain against God? It's because he does not work in the realm of their senses. Why do we have so much trouble with Romans 8, 28? We quote it and we say, oh, that's wonderful. All things work together for good to them that love God. 
but it doesn't fit into our senses. So we struggle with it. We just say, well, I'll tell you, I don't see how any good can come out of this. Why? We're struggling with our senses. Only faith can believe that God is in all that happens. And if we had the faith we ought to have, there would never be any murmuring or complaining about any of our circumstances. Lord. Brother, that, about, that knocked a good bit of us down, I believe. Yes, sir. Should I say that again? Yes. If we believed God, if we really believed Romans 8, 28, it would take out all the murmuring and complaining about our circumstances of life. It would take it all out. If we really had faith in God. If what our trouble is with our senses. Our senses are the thing that give us our trouble. It doesn't fit into our senses. Only faith can believe that God is in all that happens to us. That's why the many great man of God is at rest and at peace in all the circumstances of his life. Look at this one of Romans, I mean, of 1 Corinthians, where Paul 127. He says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, the base things, the despised things, the things which are not, the things which are, that no flesh should go. And these verses defy common sense. There's not a business anywhere in the world that would run on that. And yet God runs his kingdom on it. That which is eternal. Why does he do it? He says that no flesh should glory in his presence. It's the senses of the flesh that give us our trouble. There's not one person in the world who would live by that pattern. Look at Jeremiah 9, 23. He said, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might and let not the rich man glory in his riches but let him glory glory but let him that glorieth glorieth in this that he understandeth and knoweth me what do we glory in in wisdom in might and in power and in riches and God said why that satisfies our senses how many people are going to college and I'm not against college but are going to college struggling to get an education to achieve things in life and many of it is to satisfy the senses and God said if you want to glory in something glory in this that you know me it'll take faith to believe that D. Kassad made this another statement. He said, God chose what our natural feelings despise. Now, you, you want faith in God. You want to walk with God and follow God. Uh, look at this. God chose what our natural feelings despise and what our human prudence rejects. Now, if you're like I am, I had to get a good definition of prudence. I had to go to Webster. Webster says that prudence means the ability to govern and discipline oneself by the use of reason. And so he's saying here of prudence that God chooses what the natural feelings despise uh, and what our human prudence, that is our ability to govern ourselves, what it rejects. So if we want to live a life of faith, we must fight against, without pause, as I said, against our senses. God working in this world can only be understood by faith. You can't understand anything that's going on anywhere in the world, and as far as looking at, through our senses at the world, everything, everywhere, every direction looks hopeless. I don't see any hope anywhere on the horizon in anything, in local, state, governments, or in international governments. I don't see any hope. And I don't see how any of them seems to me like they'd all be in despair. Everything they try seems to be hopeless. God working in your life can be understood only by faith. That's the only way in the world you're going to be at peace is if you've got faith to believe that God's working in your life. If you don't, you're going to be upset and un unrest and be fretful. 
with life because your senses are making you miserable. <laughs> Isn't that something? The senses that God gave us to enjoy are making us miserable. If we've got faith, then we'll not be. When you try to understand a man who walks with God, it can only be done by faith. I want to say that again. I want you to get it. If you try to understand a man who walks with God, the only way in the world you'll understand him is by faith. If you're going by your senses, you will not stick with him. Look at Abraham. If you lived in Abraham's day, you would never have understood uh, him without faith. Can I understand why in the world God would lead this man out of Ur of Chaldees to go up and live on a mountainside in a tent? If you didn't have faith, you'd have never stuck with Abraham. Look at Noah. If you'd have lived in Noah's day, you would never have understood Noah without faith. As a matter of fact, it looks like nobody understood him for only he and his family uh, got into the ark. And here he's building a boat out on dry ground with no sign of rain, never had rain. I want to tell you, everything in the senses that he's a foolish man. And if you didn't have faith, you'd have never stuck with Noah. Noah, you can read the book and say, this is a marvelous man, this man. You'd have never stuck with him without faith. Look at Demas. Said he... Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me. Having loved this present world, Demas had no problem leaving Paul. We think that's terrible. We just thought Demas forsook Paul. We, he didn't have any problem leaving, uh, leaving Paul because he loved this present world. His senses were out here. He was following them. He was enjoying what he was doing. It would have taken faith to have stayed with Paul. Even so, it'll take faith today to stay with any man of God. We'll have to fight our senses to do it. So, I pray that our faith will be strong to follow the man who walks with God. Uh, I, oh, I, don't know. I, I don't know. I hope I'm getting across what I'm trying to say. It's a great privilege to me to walk with Brother Hill, but I want you to know that he does not walk by his senses. He walks by faith. And it will take faith to stay with him. Or our senses will lead us astray. Lot had no problem leaving Abraham. He didn't have any problem because his senses chose the green grass of the valley. They said this is the way. He didn't have any problem at all. Qualms about leaving Abraham because he was following his senses. And a man who has his follows his senses will have no problem about leaving a man of God. Because Adam was looking in the garden, the tree of life, it would have taken faith. There's not, absolutely nothing appealing about the tree of life to, to Adam, nothing. It satisfied nothing of the senses. The only thing it promised was life. And he'd have had to believe God to have eaten of it. And even so it is again today. So I pray that our faith will be strong to support Brother Oliver and what he's doing. It doesn't make sense in the religious world. It doesn't satisfy the senses, but it, by faith, if we've got faith, we'll stick with God. And then in Hebrews 11, 6, there is this wonderful verse, without faith, it's impossible to please God. I pray God will help us to have the faith that will stick with God's men and stay with him and not let our senses lead us astray.